Hello and welcome to the learning square. In this last section of face recognition using PCA, I will discuss the use of PCA for face recognition. So consider an n pixel image as a point cloud. So here we suppose this is a 10 cross 10 image. I would have 100 pixels of all the intensity values and I would have 100 such feature vectors for each and every pixel. So for a new face which is coming in, I have a database of all the images which are stored with me and I have all the intensity values of all the pixels. Remember it is essential to have the same dimensions of the images so that we have a common feature vector space. So if I have 100 pixels for this image, I would have 100 pixels for this particular image too. And I would have the intensity values stored for each and every pixel of this particular image as well as this particular image and for all the images that I have in my database. Now the idea is that when I have a new face coming in, I try to match all the features that is all the intensity values of this particular image with the images stored in my database. The nearest hit is the one which I can say is a closest proximity hit. And in case I do not get a match, I can say that this image is a new image. Now the idea of eigenfaces was to be able to reduce the dimensions of the image. So if I have a very small image, then the kind of information that I have stored in with me is not good enough for a recognition. Hence, I generally have an images which are of 200 by 200 pixel size and that would amount to 40,000 pixels for a single image. So the idea of PCA was to be able to reduce the components of this particular feature vector that I had. So you can see here without reduction storing just 20 images of 100 cross 100 pixels would need so many features. So what do we do is we take a data matrix by stacking the vectorized images. So I have all these images coming in and I store it as a matrix and I then do the principal component analysis. So given a collection of n labeled training images, we compute the mean image and the covariance matrix. Then we compute the k eigenvectors of the covariance matrix corresponding to the k largest eigenvalues. We will see all of this in detail with the code. Then we project the training image to the k dimensional eigenspace. And this is how my model is made. And then when I have to recognize, I just take a test image, project it on the given eigenspace which I already have, and perform classification to the projected training images uh, depending on the nearest distance measure that we take. So suppose I have, these are my training images. I have various poses of one person, then various poses of the other, and so on. So these are my training images which I have in my data set. Now eigenfaces would be, I take first of all, I take the mean value of all these faces, so that's my mean, and then I subtract this mean from all the data components that I had. So we saw in the previous lecture also, we first had to normalize these images. So we take the mean of all these images and then subtract each and every image with the mean. Then we find out the eigenvectors using the principal component analysis, and I retain few eigenvectors and I discard some. So these are my top eigenvectors which I will use from U1 to UK. So I could reconstruct each and every image in my database using these eigenfaces with some weights attached to these eigenvectors. So essentially I am projecting each and every face as a combination of eigenvectors with certain weights attached to them. To be able to reconstruct, like I said, if I want to reconstruct, I just attach certain weights to each and every eigenvector that I have and I am able to construct the image. Obviously I have to add the mean because I had subtracted the mean from the original images, all of them. So what I do is I first attach weights to all these eigenvalues and then I add the mean to be able to reconstruct any image in the face space. So you could see reconstruction would give me these values. And if my principal components were just four, then this is the kind of images that I'm able to reconstruct. If I take 200 principal components, the results are a little better. And if I take 400 principal components, then I'm able to get very good results. Now, how do we recognize with the eigenfaces? We first process the labeled training images. So we find the mean and the covariance matrix, find the principal components, which is the eigenvectors of this covariance matrix, project each training image x, i onto the subspace so we are able to de derive all the weight components for each and every image that we have. And once we have a new image coming in, we project that particular image 
on the subspace of the principal components and derive the weights out of it. Then we find out the differences between these weights to be able to find out which is the least weight difference that we are getting from the image database which I already have. And we classify as closest training phase in k-dimensional subspace. For a database of images, we first pre-process the images. The size of all images in the database should be same and should primarily have all the facial features present. Then we take the mean of these images which are present in the database, subtract the mean from all the images in the database, then we calculate the eigenvectors using the covariance matrix, select the k best eigenfaces to represent the whole light training set, convert lower dimensional k eigenvectors to the original face dimension, then we train the recognizer and get weight vector for each and every face in the database. Once this is done, then we are ready for testing. For a new image which is coming in, we just convert the image input to a face vector, normalize this face vector by actually subtracting the mean value which we had derived here and then we project this normalized face vector onto the eigenspace. We are now able to find out the weight vector of the input image and then we calculate the distance between the input weight vector and all the weight vectors of the training set. If the distance is less than a particular threshold, we could actually find out this threshold value by hit and trial. We could have the result as a hit or a miss. So let's see the practical example of this. So this project contains mainly three files. The main file is actually a simple GUI made out of simple display commands and input commands. An eigenphase calculation function exists which actually finds out the eigenphases of the image database that I have. Recognition is for a new image which is coming in. I try to project that new image onto the eigenphase vector that I have, find out the distances and according to the distances we try to categorize the person as somebody already in the database or a new person. So let's look at these in detail. So I will just first run this program. Now if I want to just calculate eigenfaces. Obviously, I need to first have the eigenfaces to be able to recognize a person. There are already data images here. So we have about 20 images which are stored. So we I could have any number of data images that I want. So I can maybe train 12 images. Processing these 12 images. You can see these are the 12 images which were processed. And I have some eigenvectors which are generated. Now to be able to do recognition, I would say I want to recognize a person. So I have certain images which are here called the test images. So suppose I want to recognize this particular image. So the recognition is done. So this is a simple GUI made of simple display commands and input commands. Using the switch case statements, I am here able to just take the cases up. So if I want to calculate the eigenfaces, I calculate eigenfaces using this particular function which I have created and we save it as eigenface.mat. For the case 2, remember I need to load this matrix file. So obviously I need to have this mat file created first to be able to do recognition. For the recognition I just call this function recognition here. The third is where I want to delete the database. So in case I want to delete the database, I can just, I have to delete this eigenphase.mat which is created in the first case. And in case I want to quit, I have this option here. Now we will explore the eigenphase calculation function. So looking at the eigenphase calculation function, this function takes the image number as its argument and it is the number of images that we want to work on for the eigenphase calculation. We iterate through those numbers, we divide the figure into tiles for appropriate viewing, then we just convert these images to grey and we resize them to 200 rows by 180 columns using the bilinear method. Then we store the MN values of this, so number of rows and number of columns are stored here and we see these results. So this is what we saw here. Then we are storing all these values into a temporary array which is basically uh, having so many rows and one column. So basically we get a temporary array which will have all the intensity values for the entire image here and we are concatenating all these into the final I matrix I. 
So here we are taking the mean value of the second dimension of the i vector that we have created. So effectively we are trying to find out the mean value of all the intensity values stored for the particular images that we have we taken. Now to be able to see the eigenfaces we again just do some matrix manipulation to be able to see in the 200 by 180 format which we originally had. So we just do some transposes here. Now here what we are trying to do is we are trying to iterate through the number of images and we are converting all these values stored here for the intensity into the double for being able to apply the principal component analysis. So effectively what we are getting here is in I1 we have all the intensity values with mean subtracted from it. Now again we just do some matrix manipulations to be able to see in the original size and we display the mean of all these values. So the mean is got for all these images that we had. Once this is done we change the values so got into a double and store them in the array A1. Now taking the transpose we store this as A and now we can calculate the covariance matrix of A cross A transpose which was originally what we wanted to find out is the covariance. Once we have the covariance we are now able to extract the eigen vectors from this covariance matrix. So we apply the eigen which is an inbuilt function on the covariance matrix so got this will produce a diagonal matrix eigenvalue and for the all the corresponding eigenvectors here. D will store the eigenvector so formed using this particular function here. Now we are trying to find out the sort, sorted values. So we are trying to find out only those eigenvectors which we want to retain. So these values actually can be found out according to the images that we have in our database and it is found by trial and error. So once we have this sorted out then we get the matrix of the principal eigenfaces here. So we are just projecting this on the eigenvectors. Here we are normalizing all these eigenvectors so and finally we get these eigenfaces which are the matrix of principal eigenfaces. Now to be able to again display the eigenfaces in the 200 by 180 format we do these manipulations again to reshape and then take the transpose of this and we see the results here. So these are the eigenfaces which we retain. We take an array called projected images and we try to find out the projected values for each and every image in the database on the face space that we have now from the eigenvectors. These are stored in the project images array here. So effectively out of this eigenphase calculation we have been able to find out the eigenphase phase space and we have been able to find out the projections of each and every phase on that particular phase space. Now looking at the recognition function we just first get the input image that we need for recognition. We read that particular image and we convert it into gray. We resize it into 200 by 180 using the same bilinear transformation and then we reshape it to get again the same elements along the rows to get the input image. Once this is done then we again subtract the mean here. So you can see we have inputs as the number of images that we wanted. This is the mean value, the eigenfaces which have been calculated in the eigenphase, the projected images is again calculated using the eigenphase and the image numbers that we had. So once this is done then we subtract the mean value which was already calculated before and we project this input image onto the eigenphase vectors. So here we get the weights of the input image with respect to our eigenfaces. Now we need to find out the distance of our input image and compare it with our face space and check whether it ma matches the answers that we need. So this threshold value is again got by a trial and er error method. We could also take the Euclidean distance or any other distance measures that uh, you want to take. We have taken the Euclidean distance and we are just trying to find out the distances here from the projected space that we had al already. Once this distance is got as a term here, we just try to find out the minimum value of this particular distance that we are getting. And if this particular distance that we are getting is less than a certain threshold value which we have derived using hit and trial method, we use a switch and case method to be able to display the data that we already had. So this is how this works. So let us run again for the 15 values. 
So you can see here, these are the 15 values that I had. These are the eigenvectors which are created. Now suppose I just want to find out recognition. I can maybe try to recognize an image here and the image is identified. So effectively what we have done is that we have this feature vector space which had values for each and every intensity value of the pixels of the image. We try to reduce it to a smaller domain after the principal component analysis and we found those projections for each and every image that I had. Now a new image comes in, I try to project the same values onto this feature space, the face space and I have certain values of projections here. Now I am trying to find out the distance between each and every vector here. So you can see this distance seems to be less and it is matching the second one here. So I am taking the distance measures and once I find the vectors, I will have a vector here which will have the distances for each and every value of the images inside this database and wherever the distance is minimum I will say that that is a particular match for this particular image. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.